Fermi Hubbard system, but it will be about driven uh, Fermi Hubbard system, driven lattices. And um, some things are new and so they are not will not be so smooth so you yeah, will yeah that's how it is okay but uh, let me maybe start with one thought so okay so there are some steps and maybe some of you have had conversations with people from condensed matter and usually condensed matter people say ah in cold ga gases you never make a discovery what discovery have you made there's always this Complaint. I don't know. Maybe it's only the complaint to me. But um, but I think there's actually a reason why why there is uh, not such thing that traditionally in condensed matter you would consider as a discovery. And I think the reason is that in quantum gases we always have this step by step approach. We move one step forward, then we understand it, and then the next step kind of is never a super huge step. It's it's just the next step, and then we see what kind of we had anticipated. I mean, a, a good example is of course the um, uh, the BEC BCS crossover. I mean, it's not that um, you and the others that they just were in the, um, uh, looked at all uh, the periodic table and trying out gases, cooling them and changing magnetic field and whoops, at 800 something Gauss, <laughs> lithium becomes superfluid. So it's, it's, it is a, a step by step approach and then you do not have this, um, this type of discovery. So I think there's nothing wrong about the approach uh, we have. Um, Okay, so so I um, it's a, I had these steps, and then I thought, okay, I'll put my talk into these steps. So one could wonder what can one do um, with some non-trivial topology and interactions. I mean, how how would you proceed in 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 a cold atoms experiment? So first thing is you would try to start with some trivial topology, at, at least to have some topology in the system. So for example. Um, uh, uh, graphene, and, and then next step would be, okay, some non-trivial topology, so m maybe by shaking and then uh, you, you might get some non-trivial topology in the system, but without interactions. Okay, and then you think, okay, maybe one should put interactions, but by putting interactions you, you already, of course, run into problems, so, so how does actually a shaken system, how, how does that work under, under interactions with if you have Hubbard use and so forth. And that will be part of the talk. And then uh, one could wonder, okay, can one get a step further that these interactions induce phases when, when hopping? Okay, so that's specific on, on if there is a neighboring atom that you, you can get a certain phase. And there again, you would start to do that on on a double on double wells on a simple system to to understand uh, how it works. Okay, so let me briefly remind you of the the lattice geometry uh, that we have. We overlay two lattices, and then uh, we get, for example, uh, this honeycomb type of lattice, which has. A and B sub lattices, and we, we can and we will do later on. One can tune those, and one can, of course, also control how much tunneling uh, you want to have. You can suppress it, and you have a, 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 an array of double wells, or you can couple them, and then you have a have a Hubbard system. And then um, this lattice can also be be uh, uh, shaken, so it be, it can uh, in in two dimensions most of the time we will however in this talk only shake along one one direction i mean if you do this shaking um, there we could uh, show some uh, time ago that you can use this shaking that in this non-interacting system the effective hamiltonian has some uh, complex next nearest neighbor tunneling and this allows one to to create a, a model system which has has uh, um, for example, a topologically germ insulating phase. Okay, but uh, what about interactions? I mean, combining, for example, the Hall Lane model with interaction, there was some 
a nice uh, theoretical work um, by Pavy and, and also Matthias Steuer and others. And they, they uh, showed that, okay, if you have interactions in this hubbard haldane model, you, you will actually see uh, additional uh, new faces and uh, interesting physics will, will, will come up. Okay, but from experimentalists, they are, are um, okay, they, they stop dreaming often and then they wonder, okay, uh, what's, uh, what is really on the ta uh, tablet? And, and, and that's a question heating. Uh, usually, um, when people shake lattices, they observe that uh, it heats and, and it's a mess. Uh, but in the first part of the talk, I would like to emphasize that that's not true. That's not necessarily true. Um, it, depending on how you do it, um, this is, is actually for quite a, a long period of time, you can actually work with these uh, driven Hamiltonians. And then you also wonder, how oh, can you do magnetism in these driven Hamiltonians? And then uh, there we, one can also show, yes, indeed, you, by driving, you can even make it uh, um, stronger, uh, the magnetism or the exchange interaction. You can increase and then in the last part there, uh, I will report on this very recent work where we used interactions to induce uh, uh, gauge fields. Okay, so let's start uh, with the double well, with a simple double well. Okay, uh, in the double well, well, you can tunnel and you have the on site interaction U. Uh, now let's assume we shake uh, the double well and then in this. Uh, in the this shaken frame, it's as if you do uh, a time-dependent um, uh, modulation of the site offset. So, so that is kind of the, the s simplest bit of the model. We will later see uh, a lot of situations where we connect, where we have a full Hubble model, but uh, for simplicity, let's look at the processes which we have here. Um, the one thing that uh, happens the first thing that happens is that you um, uh, that your uh, tunneling will be renormalized and of course there was uh, in your Ari Mondo's work many many years ago uh, who who did start it with the shaking on the lattice and also look at the mod insulating uh, phase transition at that time I thought oh this must heat and I didn't want to know <laughs> um, okay so this is one process, and then uh, so you renormalize the tunnel coupling. But of course, you may, may also have another atom on the on the other side with an offset, uh, or if, if both are on one side, it makes an energy U. And you can also drive. I mean, so U is another frequency in your system, and you may wonder uh, what's happening when you drive with the frequency U. Why not? But I mean, there's something is happening. So there needs to be some resonance, and um, this effectively will lead to to some kind of um, uh, den density in uh, 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 density induced uh, hopping. So, so you you can if you have another site, you get uh, this uh, hopping process which you drive, and you can. You have a resonance where you can be either resonance either, either to the red or to the blue. And if you, for that system, if you then uh, calculate your exchange interaction, um, so kind of the energy difference between singlet and, and, and triplet uh, state, and then you can see that you using the drive, a resonant drive, that you can modify uh, your exchange interaction and on the double well, if you measure it directly on the double well, you can see um, that actually the exchange interaction, if you uh, drive uh, a ready tune, you can, uh, you can increase uh, your exchange interaction. And, and th so this is double well, but we, we did, and I'll show you later, we did experiments on in, in a coupled uh, system and could see that indeed uh, our magnetic correlations increased when driving. Okay, so now let's come to 
the shaking of the whole Hubbard model. So you, you have your whole coupled Hubbard model, still, I mean, the same underlying structure, but you have uh, uh, strong coupling on, on, on these bonds as well. And there again, there are two regimes. One regime is kind of off resonantly driven, which is meaning uh, you're not driving with a frequency close to U. And then you just change uh, the hopping. You renormalize uh, uh, the hopping with this Bessel function. And if you resonantly drive, then you have, you change also uh, uh, the hopping term, but you also have, um, you have an, uh, a density induced uh, hopping and you effectively change your U. So you, you effectively change your U by, uh, by exactly this uh, frequency. And now one can wonder, okay, what is actually happening in such a Hamiltonian? How, how can I test whether, whether this Hamiltonian uh, makes sense to, to, to play with? Does that describe the physics that I see? Is that experimentally a useful Hamiltonian? And uh, the first thing is uh, that we just look at losses and this type of uh, approach. So th this is the first thing, but then you see these two colors, uh, blue and red, and there um, the idea will be that we compare the same driven and undriven Hamiltonians and measure, say, the double occupancy as a function of time and compare, do a quantum simulation of the driven Hamiltonian with the, the equivalent static one. Okay, but first I want to take uh, your, your worry about driven systems. Um, and the, the, the reason why it seems that, that we were a bit luckier uh, with driving the system is actually uh, originates in our hexagonal uh, lattice structure. So we compared cubic with dimerized and then hexagonal uh, lattice structure. And um, well, if one has, and, and then, okay, the results are here's just a relative atom number relative to the beginning and then we drive for, uh, with a certain frequency and we drive uh, for a modulation time of one second. So quite a while, so, so it's a good time. And here we see the hexagonal uh, lattice. There um, we see that for a large frequency range, we, we, we see not, not too, too much loss. Yes? Is this the off-resonant driving here? Or is it... um, th th this is now, this is now um, uh, well, over the whole frequency range. It may include use, it may include, uh, which U that is, this is 700 hertz here, and the U will be on the next slide, yeah. So this is uh, 700 hertz, so, so it's more reflects the non-interacting, but it seems that the main point uh, is that the lattice structure of this hexagonal lattice has along, along this direction, and the, the band structure, has the excited bands are flat, uh, very flat. And th that's because of this missing, uh, this missing bond. And this uh, allows you to drive along this direction over a large frequency range. You, 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 you don't have states there. And as compared, for example, to simple cubic that has, um, uh, has quite a dispersion and, and then you hit resonances. And, and that's why you, you get these losses fairly early. So, so this is blue curve is a cubic and the dimerized is somewhere in between with some sharper uh, resonances. So it seems, uh, at least that's our conclusion, that um, depending on the band structure, uh, you just have to be careful and, uh, yeah, and then you may find such windows. Can I ask one more question? Yes, sure. Ooh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's a real feature, yeah. But there's nothing on this plot at four or five kilohertz, so 
on yeah but it's multi photon you you hit multi photon it's it's uh, yeah it's it's avoiding multi photon resonances and and there is probably a multi photon resonance in that it yeah and then um the other question uh, that you had now um uh, as a function of uh u so the the whole so so here it's u the the horizontal axis is uh, u of course, using a Feshbach resonance. And the static lattice is, um, is the other red curves. So that's what you have in relative atom number after one second for in, in the static lattice, the red curve. And uh, for a shaking of 2.5 kilohertz, that's the blue points. So it's not too bad. Um, here, okay, here it's getting a bit worse at, at higher uh, frequencies. And um, the, the black curves are for 4.25. Again, there are regions uh, where you, you can work fairly well. Okay, it's a one second, so it's really, it's, it's a long time. It's a long time. Okay, so now one may ask the question, um, well, what are actually the timescales? Can one measure somehow the timescales? I mean, you, you have some observable, and that will be uh, double occupancies, and you switch your drive on, and then you may change some parameter, the tunneling or, or the, the effective U, and then uh, you want to see what, what, what is happening with this uh, observable, and that, that might change over a certain time. There might be local changes, kind of, because it, it fee the, this observable fees are ah, okay, now I can can tunnel to the to the neighbor, and then there are longer processes where kind of the whole trap plays a role and uh, and which are more uh, uh, take more time, and then at some point uh, heating will will kick in. That is unavoidable. But the question is somehow how how, how long are these time scales and can one uh, do something there? And um, so here the first set of measurements is a comparison between undriven and driven systems. So, so blue, undriven, driven is the right. And uh, it's off-resonantly driven. So meaning off-resonantly compared to, uh, to you. And uh, we do a ramp uh, in, the, in the tunnel matrix element. And we measure the dou double occupancy. And we ramp uh, the, uh, the tunneling down, and that results in a reduce. Uh, it, it's getting more 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 insulating in a reduce of double occupancy. And here is the time scale. And then at some point, uh, it, the system heats up or re, re thermalizes uh, on a global scale, and it goes up. And here we can see over, I mean, basically this, the whole hundred uh, driving cycles that it's, it's fairly uh, equivalent, uh, these two, two Hamiltonians, what, what we see. And this uh, yellow curve is if we start with the final Hamiltonian initially. So kind of it approaches the, the, the final uh, the value that you would expect for that Hamiltonian. Uh, and then we could also look at, at longer timescales, uh, and there we kind of went to a region where we had uh, more uh, tunnel coupling, larger tunnel coupling, but again um, doing a similar, uh, a similar uh, quench. Uh, again, um, uh, off resonantly driven, and then we can see. Uh, this going up, and finally the, the heating uh, kicking in uh, on longer timescales. And here we can also see that at some point uh, we lose atoms um, uh, in the driven system. But again, over a good time, we we, we have it's it's uh, our the effective Hamiltonian describes the system well. And then uh, we also looked at. Uh, resonantly uh, driven Hamiltonians. And there, in the experiment, we start in the mod insulating, and then we change U to some final uh, value. 
or in a ramp. We, we first make a, a jump and then, and also, well, that in the undriven system it's a, it's a spin flip, and then we go in a ramp to, say, a non-interacting repulsive or attractively interacting uh, system. <laughs> And then we watch how, what is the evolution, the time evolution in, in, in the Hamiltonian of, of uh, the double occupancy. And we can see that for the non-interacting, repulsive interacting and attractive interaction apart from the red curve, uh, we get again very good agreement between the effective Hamiltonian and uh, so the driven Hamiltonian and the equivalent uh, static uh, Hamiltonian. And he, here this red curve that has, well, the green curve agrees well, the red curve has a bit a different protocol to compare with, so that's a subtility. Okay, so um, briefly I want to show you without discussing too much in detail the magnetic correlations in driven lattices. Um, off resonantly there one can show, uh, uh, also show that you get in the effective Hamiltonian, you get for short time scales, I think that was 20, 30, 40 milliseconds, um, you get the same level of magnetic correlations as in the equivalent static one. If you drive resonantly, you can even enhance uh, the magnetic correlations because you can e enhance the exchange energy. Okay, so, so that was the part where I wanted to, to uh, kind of convey the message that these driven Hamiltonians, if one is a bit careful, are, one should think about driving and the driving enhances kind of the, the, the playing field that, that you have. And now uh, the question is, well, what, what could one do with the driving? And a system which one would like to have is something, I mean, we do have these lattices and the particle can hop and you might have some some tunneling and uh, it might have uh, some phase. But it would be nice to have a situation where, well, if the particle hops on this other bond and, and hops onto uh, a, a situation where there is a particle on the other side, that then you actually acquire a different phase. So if you could control the phase that the particles acquire depending on well, for the red particles, say, depending on what green particles you, you have to, to get some, some dynamical uh, uh, type of gauge fields. And we looked at that situation on, on an array of uh, uh, double wells on, on bonds. And using now two, two driving frequencies. So we not only drive with one, but we drive with two frequencies and then we get full control of this phase relative to the phase that is uh, for the single particle. And, and we can measure that. Okay, so the idea is, well, we start off with a, a small uh, a sublattice offset and then we drive the transition, so, so we have, we prepare, uh, we, we uh, prepare singlets, and then we drive with two frequencies uh, to, uh, to the doublon. So we, we couple the singlet to the doublon via two uh, processes, via a process uh, where two omega is u or two times one omega. <laughs> is uh, uh, the, the, the energy difference. So, so we have kind of, it's like driving with two modes and these two modes, how we drive, their phase we can uh, control. So it's, um, uh, well, that is basically kind of the, the driving frequency in time that we have and depending on uh, a relative phase, the, the pattern changes, but and we also have, of course, control of, of the, the common phase. And if you, well, the question is always, uh, how, how could one relate that to something else? Um, and, and since it's all new, I'm, I'm not so sure how good 
examples I, I bring, but, but one option is if you think of the situation that you have a ground state atom, an excited state atom, and now you drive it with a laser field and you may drive it with two, two modes with a second laser field. And now, of course, uh, you can drive it, um, well, when you interfere those two modes, you, you can determine by the phase, you can determine how it's driven. You even can make it uh, go to zero, because if the one laser field goes up and, and the other goes down, uh, then uh, your, your excitation vanishes. And, and this control, uh, you also have in our system singlet to, to uh, uh, double occupancy. Okay. Um, and now, uh, okay, and, and this gives a tunneling matrix element which has this form, where, where this alpha and beta, um, they, they are functions of our case, well, our drive, our uh, driving amplitudes. But one can write it in this way, and there you can already see that if beta is larger than alpha, and um, and you have you create a negative sign here, then you can have a sign change in the in your in your tunneling. And and you can of course all uh, create all uh, different type of phases, and you can wrap kind of wrap around and have a sign change. We will see that this has the structure uh, of a Dirac point, this matrix element, and. Well, I had shown you this one, it was a two drive. And now we have to compare it to the situation where there is no atom on the other side. So we need to compare it to, uh, relative uh, to something. And uh, since it's difficult just to blow away the atoms and so on, that, that is tricky, but what one can do, we can um, use a radio frequency to another internal state. So we, it was early on, it was red, I think, here, that one, and it, we can make it green. And there we can make a, a Hamiltonian um, where the U is exactly the delta and uh, where this energy uh, is equal. And, and that is our Hamiltonian with which we, we can, can compare our engineered uh, Hamiltonian. And here, um, this matrix element has a uh, slightly different. It has a different character because here's a sign, so you cannot uh, you cannot uh, fully wrap around. But the, the the reason is because you you don't have this. It's not sensitive to this second drive, so this one phase uh, is missing. But th this is our Hamiltonian to to compare with. Okay, and then um, okay, we, we we do two types of measurement. One measurement is to measure the absolute value of this T effective. And uh, that is a landau zener type of sweep. And if there is uh, always a gap, so if on when we hit the resonance, when we hit the point of interest, if there is a gap, then uh, our system will uh, simply go from the singlet initial state to the double occupancy. Which, which we can measure. So we can measure singlets and we can measure uh, double occupancies. And of course, if the gap goes to zero, if we are in a situation that those two terms cancel each other, uh, then uh, we will have uh, reduced double occupancies or ideally no double occupancies. And we can ma make such a measurement. So for, let's first uh, make this um, uh, measurement of of, of just the, the absolute value of this um, uh, matrix element, and, and that's shown here. And this is in the space of the driving. So this K1 and K2 are the two, uh, two parameters of this uh, driving, one of the one frequency, one of the, the other frequency. And we can see that here, well, the theory line is, is here. That's where you should have uh, vanishing um, 
vanishing double occupancy on this green line. And we see we have a minimum. We have not completely vanishing double occupancy and particularly not up here. But that's not so surprising because we want to bring down this matrix element to zero. And uh, out here, alpha and beta are uh, uh, bigger. And then it's diffi more difficult to get, I mean, to get your, your angle exactly right. So any fluctuation will, will give you a finite, uh, a finite value. So we are not too unhappy with those. Measurements, but of course the question is also what what is the phase? It would be nice to see that there is a change in the phase when it goes to uh, through zero. So one would like to know this: uh, what's happening uh, 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 as a function of phase? Okay, and to to measure, oops, perfect. Yeah. Um, to measure uh, the phase. Um, we do the f have the following measurement protocol. So this brown Hamiltonian, uh, that is the Hamiltonian with the drive. That's uh, uh, when we have the, the kind of the interacting and driven Hamiltonian. And what we do is we start with a, um, with a singlet and then we adiabatically uh, prepare the state on the equa equator. So we go, well, adiabatically up with this Hamiltonian. And then we switch to the other Hamiltonian, which is along uh, the x-axis. And then we let uh, the system evolve and measure uh, the double occupancy. So then, then this would go, say, if it started here, it would go up and down again. So that's uh, how we make uh, the measurements. And this is here, you see, this is this adiabatic um, uh, preparation. Then we have as many singlets as doublets, uh, as, as uh, double occupancies. And then uh, we see these Rabi oscillations in, in, the effective, in the effective Hamiltonian. And now we do this measurement. Um, we, we determine what, uh, what a pi half pulse is. And then we can measure when we go on to this point, and then we measure the relative phase between these two Hamiltonians. We measure them as, as a function. So this relative phase changes with the co common phase of both. Okay, so we, we, we change this phase, we, we, we move, we continuously move this, and then we can extract this relative phase between the two Hamiltonians. And um, that is here, here we, uh, this absolute phase is changed. And then uh, we, we, we see this kind of Ramsey fringes. And from those, we can determine uh, uh, the, rel or the relative phase. And now we can uh, plot. So we have this, well, I've shown, shown you earlier, this gap closing transition. And now we can measure along this line what, what is the relative phase doing. And, and this is, well, the, the green line, it's, it's maybe it should have been the blue line. Anyway, and there we can see that we have indeed a jump in the phase by approximately 180 uh, degrees. And then we can also now go into, that's the la last slide, we go um, into a, uh, we, we take a, a certain k1 and k2, our driving parameters, and change uh, uh, the relative phase. And then uh, we can measure uh, and we see that how the double occupancy goes to zero here at, at, the, at the Dirac point. And uh, here we can also measure, um, we can, so there are two relative phases, there are many relative phases. So that's the relative phase of the driving. And then we have the phase uh, between the two Hamiltonians. And there we can see that this Hamiltonian has this, uh, this vortex uh, type of structure. And here are some pictures of those. 
And um, well, with this I come to the concluding um, uh, slide on that. I should also mention there has been a few days ago, ago by Fabian and, and co-workers a proposal with a single drive which doesn't have the stirrup point structure but there are, I, I had not had yet the time yet to, to read through it, but I think there are a lot of uh, similarities, we'll, we'll, we'll see that. Um, and here, well, there is a very busy picture, so you have uh, the Dirac points uh, on the Dublins, but uh, if it's single, then you, you have an open gap, so one will see what one can uh, do with that, but I would very much like to thank the people, and I should uh, point out that um, Frederick uh, uh, Görg, he, and also Kilian Sandholz, so they, they were, um, yes, they really came up with that scheme and, and measured, and um, yeah, so I would like to thank them and the whole team, of course, uh, uh, very much. So. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, um, yes, of course, that's the hope, um, um, and, um, but, uh, but we, we had not so much time so far to dream, yes. Uh, <laughs> it was actually, it worked surprisingly well, that was a nice thing. I mean, we, it, 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 yes, it just worked. Uh, it, it, I mean, sometimes, you know, you work hard and it doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, but, but th that was okay. Ah, we tried this, and I think I was on holiday, or on a conference <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I got this data saying, no, we see this for Ramsey, for instance, oh, we work this and this work. So, so um, and uh, I, I hope that, of course, you can start coupling. I think that experimentally should not be too difficult. And then maybe you can prepare with the spins in, uh, well, the way how you prepare the other states, um, you, you get a certain, well, uh, 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 you can prepare the way how you can get phases depending on the density and then that might have influence on the whole scheme. You can think about uh, do you have some sort of edge states in this system but, uh, but I cannot give you a conclusive answer because we have to think about yeah. that and then of course one has these ideas and then one has to check where, where are the problems so, as usual. Uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, the, the Hamiltonian at the end reduces to, a, a, well, it's on the, a double well with an offset, and then uh, you couple the singlet state to the double occupied on, on one of the sides, so there's li one, one uh, uh, some offset. And that, that makes sure that you couple to only this and not to the other one. In principle, you could also, but the most simple form is you couple only uh, to that one and you couple to it via two driving uh, frequencies. Kind of you, you have this density assisted hopping, but with two frequencies. And with two frequencies, that allows you uh, to get the control of the phase. Ah. Yes. Ah, so, 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 uh, so yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, for the case of the one frequency drive and not the double level, where you yes. have many body uniform system, has anyone, do we have any idea of what the phase diagram is? I, I think that, isn't that for the one frequency drive more or less in your? paper, I thought that, that, that that's how I understood from our brief conversation that you looked at the letter with a one frequency drive uh, and then at, well, what the letter phase is in a Boisonic case though, I think. I that's
You can also tune, but you don't get the wrap around. You, you, for one frequency, you get kind of that was. Um, but I, I yeah, I, th this type of. I think that's the type you have also. Uh, yeah. But okay, thanks. Well,